So today I'm going to be speaking um, as one member of the artist group, the Living and the Dead Ensemble, um, as Mirna said. We are made up of um, Leonard Jean-Baptiste, Mackensen Bijou, Rossi Jacques Casimir, Dieu Vela Cherestal, James Desiris, James Flarisson, Louis Henderson, Cynthia Magnon, um, Olivier Marbeuf, and, and uh, Mimitek Neg. We first gathered in July 2017 for the Monsieur Toussaint workshops at the Centre d'Art in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, where we worked together on translating the play Monsieur Toussaint by Edouard Glissant from French to Haitian Creole. As an ensemble, we focus on theater, cinema, poetry, song, slam, and rap. Uh, there's different iterations of this work that have featured throughout the festival that Mina also said. Also, just a quick plug, um, Outside is a publication that we made um, in collaboration with um, a curator from Pakistan called Aziz Sohail. Um, it's a project called Scroll. It's five euros. It's very interesting, and you can buy it um, outside. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you some clips from a film that we're making. The first clip is actually um, not in the film. It's actually a documentation of the workshops. So I wanted just to give you a first part about that. Um, the play that we focused on is called Monsieur Toussaint, written in 1959 by the Martinican uh, philosopher, poet, novelist, called Edouard Glissant. Um, the play was originally written for the radio, and it was uh, published by France Culture in 1971, or published, it was, it was done as, as, a, as a radio emission in 1971. However, in 1974, um, Glissant comes back to the play, rewrites it as a work for theatre. Um, the version that we actually looked at was the theatrical version. So it's interesting this work goes from radio um, to state to theatre, kind of from sound to image, something that we're interested in as well in, in, the, in the work. Um, the play narrates the last days in the life of Toussaint Louverture, one of the leaders of the Haitian Revolution, imprisoned in the Chateau de Joux um, in the east of France, very far away from the revolution that was still unfolding in Haiti all the way across in the, Atlant all the, way across the Atlantic. Louverture was imprisoned in France by Napoleon, who kept him there and killed him through imprisonment. Louverture died on the 7th of April, 1803, from exhaustion, malnutrition, pneumonia, and possibly tuberculosis. His bones were chucked into an unmarked grave in the Jura Mountains. Um, thus, we think Louverture's body was somewhat ossified or fossilized into the landscape that itself was um, a form of fossilized ocean. The Jura was a tropical ocean. Uh, in the Sonic Axe catalog, or the book that's been published for Hereafter this year. We have the text called Du Boucan Chez Glissant by Olivier Marbeuf. Um, we don't translate the title, it's in French, it's just that. Um, in which he argues that the body of Louverture in the play can be understood as a kind of landscape. This is a concept from Olivier which he calls un corps paysage, a body landscape. Um, as Louverture's dying body is in the process of decomposition, decomposing. Um, ghosts from the history of the Haitian Revolution come and recompose themselves and their history over his decaying corpse. They create a chorus of ghosts that produce a um, um, cacophony, loud noise, a noise loud enough to awaken the dead. It's precisely in this sense that we treated the text of Glissant as a landscape of a decomposing body upon which we could recompose a um, sort of a, a kind of cacophonic space of uh, voices, cries, and noise. Um, Rossi Jacques Casimir. In 2016, I met Louis Henderson, and I can tell you that this meeting was more than rewarding. I collected vinyl records at that time, and he bought one from me. It was Master G's album, Pan Politique, the first Haitian Creole rap record. I think he was shooting a film on the island, I mean, between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And I had a slam called Identité that he said he appreciated a lot. He asked if I agreed to put it in his movie. 
A few months later, he contacted me to share further ideas. He had a book by Edouard Glissant that he had received as a gift, and we thought it interesting to try and work with this book. A few months later, he sent me more details, asking if I could gather together seven other actors and slammers. I proposed the, I proposed the team that we're working with today. This is an extract from a WhatsApp message that Rossi sent me uh, three days ago. And now I just will quickly read an extract from an interview that Rossi did with um, the writer Rob Sharp for an article that ended up on the website of Freeze, uh, the art magazine thing. Rob said to Rossi, do you feel there is a language barrier for most Haitians to their history? What's the best way of getting around this? Rossi replies, it's not a barrier, it's zombification. Because the majority of people living in Haiti are illiterate and the history of the country is written in a language that most people do not speak. The people in the poor neighborhoods in the countryside, I mean, which actually represents the majority of the population. The best way to get around this is to make an education system that's more accessible to our people's understanding. Our history should be written in Creole because the population adapts better with Creole and historical slogans work better, like Coupetet Boulekai. And um, Grenadier à l'assaut, si Camorise a fait ayo, nan point maman, nan point papa, sa Camorise a fait ayo. This project speaks of the divisions that exist between French and Creole, and this is the reason why we decided to translate the play to Haitian Creole. Not in a simple translation, but a contemporary translation of the theme so that Haitians can understand the play today. So that's from Rossi. Glisson writes in his introduction to the 1974 theatrical version that he resisted, as he calls it, a simple process of creolizing his work, and that he expects the interpreters to bring it into their own languages according to the situation they're in. So we took him, at, we, we took him for word. We wanted to put Glissant's work into motion as a way to test out how well it could stand up against the realities of life in Haiti today. Um, we understood that this would involve, as Rossi put it at the time, a total, and this is before that Olivier wrote the text, obviously, um, a decomposition and recomposition of Glissant's play. I'll just show the first clip, so if we could turn the lights off, please. <laughs> On finalise ça. On dit, on nous donne des On va dire qu'on connaît, on donne des bâtis à la foule là. Oui, on prend là, on fait froid, on prend le bâtis de là, on fiscalise ça. Ok? Et qu'on a le mot. Il vient faire tchoul blanc ici. Tchoul colon. Il vient faire tchoul colon. C'est comme si il était de la mode. C'est comme si. C'est comme si. C'est comme si il quittait, c'est moi. C'est comme s'il t'a quitté, liberté le nom. Comment on est un petit lèvre? bien passé. Ça veut dire que tu es un petit Il va faire la visite à vous, payer son chapeau. Je vais vous donner le téléphone. Je vais vous donner le téléphone. Je vais vous donner le téléphone. Et puis la la ma bouille a dit que moi j'ai l'impression qu'en fait là les empoisonneurs je pense qu'en fait ils parlent des français c'est le contraire tu vois tout ça il est en prison là dans le Jura il y a des fantômes qui viennent le visiter Makaya vient en fantôme et lui dit alors mange soutiens toi mange donc ton pain n'est plus le nôtre eux ils sont des fantômes eux ils mangent voilà. et Matandal dit on raconte qu'ils furent dans le temps D'assez bons empoisonneurs. Peut-être qu'il parle des Français, parce qu'après il dit, parole de connaisseur, regarde Macandal qui vérifie ta nourriture, gouverneur. Juste. 
C'est-à-dire qu'en fait, il vérifie la nourriture de Toussaint parce, si parce qu'il il parle de, ses, de ceux qui l'ont emprisonné. Et donc je crois qu'il parle des Français. Il renverse, tu sais, il renverse le, la remarque. C'est-à-dire qu'il dit, lui, lui dit mange, lui, il dit, en gros, attention, parce qu'à l'époque, ils, ils empoisonnaient. Et là, après, lui, il dit, regarde, par, comme il dit, mais Makanda, toi aussi qui as empoisonné, donc tu vérifies la nourriture parce que tu es un connaisseur. Donc je pense qu'en fait, la remarque sur les empoisonneurs, elle est sur les Français, en fait. Non. Je crois que c'est ça. Hein. Peut-être c'est peut bien le bijou de, de revenir au, au début, lire en français euh, une première partie et puis dire en créole et chacun peut euh, voir si ça marche ou pas. Monsieur Libeta, Monsieur Bayon Libeta, revenez. Tu peux revenir. Mouché Libeta, Mouché Bayon Libeta, tout n'est non. Où mettre tout n'est Ton cocher conduit sur la bonne route. Qu'après tout sous bon chemin, est-ce qu'il y a une différence, est-ce qu'il y a une distance entre la cabane de la, de la mort dans la mort et la belle vie où tu couches tes frères. Est-ce qu'il y a une distance entre cave et belle vie que tu fais frère ou dodo? Il n'y a pas de distance. Tes frères passent avant d'être là. Aucun. Pas de distance. Non point. Non point de distance. Tu fais tout cadavre. Dans point de distance, vous faites tout cadavre. C'est ce domaine aujourd'hui qui fait la lessive de la mort. Oh. Je ne le dis pas, c'est ce domaine qui a fait la lessive de la mort. Je ne le pas. Pour nous baigner dans l'esclavage, aussitôt après qu'on l'essuie sur, sur notre peau. Nous trompons dans la misère. Pendant le temps, il y a un peu Ok. So that's the workshops. Well, that's a very small series of clips from 10 days of workshops. They all sat there deep in the shade of many trees, in the garden of the Centre d'Art in Port-au-Prince, Rossi next to Cynthia, next to Fleurisson, next to Léo, next to Mimitech, next to Louis, next to Bijou, next to Olivier, next to Désiris, next to Duvelat. The words of the dead at our lips. We stood up all at once and put a left hand on the right shoulder of the person to the left, and Rossi, the first in line, walked towards the centre and began circling around. I was first in line, and I followed behind, and behind you was me, and then behind those three at the front, there was I, and so on and on as such, and we all followed, starting to spin round and round, moving off from under the tree towards the exit of the garden, hands on shoulders, faces up towards the sinking sun. We didn't know where we were going, but we knew where we wanted to go. Spaghetti and beer, cigarettes, were all we had or all we needed, perhaps. The workshops were organized in an ad hoc manner. We were keen to conduct a workshop on Edouard Glissant in kind of Glissantian terms, that we could work in relation to each other whilst also accepting each other's impenetrability. And as such, we thought we might find a non-reductive, non-hierarchical group form in which ideas of subjugation, manipulation, and control, often so inherent in filmmaking, might become a priori impossible. This also relates to how we treated the text, not to master or to conquer it, but to place it in relation to the context of Haiti, and then through trying to understand its polysemic potential. Each word's polysemic potential. The text is then not at all translated word for word, but rather echo-translated 
into a form that is alien to the original. It's a kind of versioning or dubbing in the musical sense of the original in which the text is put through the bodies of the, of the Haitian members of the ensemble and rendered their own through the use of particular contemporary slang phrasing, through the transformation of French to Haitian Creole. Yet the text remains fundamentally itself. It exists in relation and not subjugation to this new version. And in this sense, it becomes, as Glisson might have put it, a reconstituted echo or spiral retelling of the original. The original text is echoed back to itself with all the inflections and textures of the landscape and the bodies that it is being reverberated within and against. And so, much like echo in the Greek myth, the ensemble works at speaking for themselves through the words of another, the work of Glissant placed into relation with their own experiences. So this choral body might be understood as an echo chamber for history, politics, and poetry. I'll just show another clip. Oh, yeah, I forgot to show, actually. No, that's afterwards, I think. I'll just show a quick clip to give an idea of, 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 of how we um, ended up translating the form of the, of the play. I'll just show sort of two minutes. Oh, if we can have the lights down again. It's a nice scene, it goes on and on. But you can see it in the film when it's done. Um, and the film currently is three hours long. So I hope you like short films. So after Echo translating and recomposing the play, we decided to spend a lot of time together. Um, well, I mean, it felt like a lot of time. Um, if, uh, over a period of a few months at the end of 2017, to begin rehearsals of the work, both our performance of the spiral retelling of Monsieur Toussaint and a film that would document the process and start to fictionalize various ideas discussed as a group. Um, this is a picture from the performance we did at the Ghetto Biennale in Port-au-Prince in 2017. Um, it was well received. 
Uh, we had a large public and we did the play inside um, the cemetery. Uh, it's a play about ghosts with the living and dead ensemble. Uh, the cemetery is obviously an important place for that. We did it at dusk as well, at the moment where um, the sun is setting and everything starts to get, that's when the werewolves start to come out and the different mysterious characters get to kind of release themselves from the graves. Um, I mean, this is kind of banal, actually, what I'm going to say now, and I sort of regret that I wrote it, but I'll say it. But, um, well, whilst design, I mean, this is simply how some things happen, but also it's more complex than that. But we were designing the poster to advertise the performance at the Biennale, and uh, we realized that it wasn't possible. Like, we were just sitting there, and then someone said, who's the director? Uh, and Olivier and I would look to each other, and... I mean, I don't direct, I can't direct. I don't know how to direct. Olivier is not a director, he's a performer himself anyway. Um, and then we decided, well actually, we'd all authored the work because they'd worked on the translation. Many of the scenes are improvised. The whole play had been put together through this continual process of discussion and workshopping. So it was at that moment that we realized, of course, this is work was constituted by multiple voices. There wasn't one individual that was leading the, the, the narration. So that's where we start to decide to form the ensemble. I suggested we should have a name in Creole, which was immediately scoffed at and laughed at by the Haitians. Olivier, of course, came in with some French. They said, you're mad. They said, it has to be in English if we want to have any outreach in the world. So that was interesting. Um, there's two chapters in the play. One is called Le Vivant, the other is called Le Mort. Um, they're the two chapters we found we liked the best. In the end, Le Vivant et Le Mort. And then, of course, this word ensemble, which we know, or well, I, don't, I don't assume people know, but in French it means together. Also, we like the word ensemble because it emphasized a shared interest in music and performance um, and a kind of polyphonic orchestration that allows the adequate space for each solo performer whilst containing this sort of um, uh, voice of a we, um, an ever-changing whole, of, of, an ever-changing whole of which the individual parts resist identification which is yet constituted by these individuals. So this is, this is the notion of the ensemble um, as opposed to perhaps collective. I don't know, maybe we can think about that later. Um, so this work of echoing and spiraling the work of others, of taking the words and putting them into one's own mouth and body, of speaking tongues, is, was also a way for us to try and decenter this singular author. Um, this happened also through problematizing the sort of notion of the self, the individual, through this insistence of voicing this choral we, um, somehow we sort of, well, we started to understand that the very act of uh, translating had brought us together. So we'd actually formed the ensemble out of this necessity to try and find a way to work together within the specific context of Haiti. So on and away from Glissant, and the problems that he started to pose to us in terms of the discrepancy between what he says he wants to do and what he actually does. The discrepancy, I think, between what Glisson tells diegetically through his philosophy about the Caribbean and what he shows mimetically through his novels in the Caribbean. Um, I don't have justice, I don't have justice, I don't have the time to do justice to this particular critique of the work of Glisson but we hope to think that when the film is released, it might be understood that we engage with his work as a way to test its limits. But just a few ex examples, for just, just quickly. Um, we found that the play obviously centralizes the figure of Toussaint as a kind of tragic hero who is distinguished from the collective, from the people, from the revolutionary organization through his destiny as a leader. Whilst Glisson in the Caribbean discourse speaks of the utmost importance of writing, and I quote from Glisson, the novel of the I implicated in the we, of the I implicated in the other, of the we implicated in the we, I am told that this is impossible to write the novel of the we, that it will be, a necess be always be necessary to provide the incarnation of particular destinies. This is a beautiful risk to take. Well, we didn't find this we necessarily <laughs> with this focus on Toussaint. 
In another essay, Theatre, Consciousness of the People, Glissant speaks of a form of community theatre that could awaken a political and collective consciousness in Martinique. He says, and I quote Glissant again, the life of the Martinican is certainly filled with drama and the theatre is in the street. Yet his, the only play that Glisson wrote and was performed pretty much entirely um, in France for a French audience on radio and stage. And then that leads us to this final problem, which is the, pro which is the fact of the play being written in French and of certain like, important Haitian characters like Jean-Jacques Dessalines or Maman Dio, um, well, she's a, a fictional character, speaking this very Glissantian literary form of French that just doesn't seem to fit with the political program that Glissant sets up in regard to the dialectic between written and oral languages, of languages as he calls them in situation. Again, from Caribbean discourse, Glissant says, says, as a community, and he means the Caribbean community, we have lost the meaning of our own voice. Would an awakening to orality and the explosion of Creole satisfy this deficiency? So again, we found this slightly paradoxical that he d resists to write the play in Creole. I mean, he doesn't speak Haitian Creole anyway, but um, he could have written it in the Creole of Martinique. So I would need more time to elaborate on this properly, but as a footnote in the talk, I'd suggest to those people interested, to really, really, if you're interested, to look at the work of Kaima El Glover, who's the Associate Professor of French and Africana Studies at Barnard College in Colombia, and author of Haiti Unbound, a spiralist challenge to the post-colonial canon. Um, I came to Glover's work on the Haitian author Franck Etienne via an essay called Showing Versus Telling, Spiralism in the Lights of Antianité. In this text, she uses the work of Franck Etienne as a way to reveal precisely how Glissant doesn't do what he says he does. And uh, in the words of Franck Etienne, she shows that he, and then I quote Franck Etienne, wrote the novels that Glissant should have written. It's a brilliant essay, and I don't have time to really properly discuss it, but I just use that as a way to start speaking about um, the literary movement of spiralism, spiralisme, from, ha from Haiti, from that, that came about in 65. Um, and work towards ending this talk, and then we can go to discussion. Um, Franck Etienne is a Haitian writer and poet and playwright, um, along with the other Haitian writers, Jean-Claude Fignolet and René Philotet. He formed the aesthetic philosophy of spiralism, uh, which was committed to discovering an original approach to creative expression for the Haitian artist and individual. The spiral is their primary uh, thematic and formal um, point of departure for their works. Um, Franck Etienne wrote what he called spiral, spiral novels. So it's not just how the narrative spirals in time, not following a line, but this shape, but also how subjectivities, voices, identities spiral off and, and, and away from each other. Um, what's that been? I, I better speed up. So I'm gonna finish with this a few, just a few pieces and then just one more clip, um, which is short. The film that we started to unfold over the coming months discarded the play and spiraled into a series of scenes with people crossing over and into their own uh, characters, themselves playing their characters and themselves playing themselves, fractured states of identity that were unsure and unfixed, mixed between dreams, nightmares and waking life. The spiraling of the characters within themselves and their environments created a kind of echo effect within the narrative itself whereby the voices of the actors become indissociable from the voices of the characters. Um, I just quote from Cynthia Magnon, one of the members of the group. To embody Maman Dio and Suzanne Toussaint was an honor for me because in the history of Haiti, women are very underrepresented. And this allowed me to highlight the involvement of women in the fight for freedom and to say to the world and to myself that the fight must not stop there. And I quote from Mimitek Neg, it has been important for me to participate in such a noble project. I say noble, why? Because this awakened in each of us the afterlife of slavery. And through the incarnation of Macandal, I allowed myself to relive history. So what we started to realize that this film was actually already infused with ideas and aesthetic approaches inherited from the work of Franck Etienne. 
Neither Olivier nor Louis had read much Franck Etienne, but of course all of the Haitians were very familiar, and as such his presence kept on coming into the work. Particularly in the way that how we decide, or what we decided to tell and do, and how we decided to tell and do these things. Um, Glover, Kaima L. Glover, while speaking of the work of Franck Etienne, she says in this, in this essay, um, Showing versus Telling, these beings are ultimately more relational than individual. That is, their value to a given text is primarily a function of their manner of insertion into the narrative collective. Like musical passages in textual symphonies, his characters literally and figuratively bounce off, uh, echo, double, and reflect one another. So this is a passage I only read like a few weeks ago, whilst also reading one of the first, my first uh, readings of Franck Etienne, a book called Mur à crever, Ready to Burst. But this could almost be a description of the film that we were shooting in August. It was kind of already there, um, in which the attempt at representing this choral voice meant a clear stepping back from authorial control and letting the voice, and I quote Glover on Franck Etienne again, stammer onto the page to repeat, contradict, and affirm itself without predetermined objective. So as such, the film is written and directed by the ensemble. Even if I'm responsible for making the images, the ensemble directs me within its shape. This happens through processes of improvisation, both of what is said and how the body says what, it, how the body says what it's saying in the particular space it's in. So what we tried to do was actually create a, a spiral around us as such that contains what you might say in French, the mise en scène, um, and within the spiral, you have each performer, you have the camera, you have the landscape, you have the sound people, the weather, the sun, the wind, the sea, the other people that are not performing but are in the image. And actually everybody's free to move and think in any direction in accordance with the movement of each scene. So this is a kind of this is a form of kind of free improvisation that's guided and directed by a pre-decided beat or rhythm. That's quite good timing. And I finished now, I'm just gonna read a poem from Cynthia Magnon and then I just show a short clip where actually two members of the group discuss this, this uh, concept, spiralism, actually much better than I can explain to you really. But I just read this poem from Cynthia because I, I like it very much. We, we spin around and round with our misery. We are lost without knowing it. Today, everyone wants to beat their wings. It's a pointless game and so we cheat. We want to go without knowing where we are going. To stay doesn't offer anything. We are exhausted from treading water because all it makes is mud. We are exhausted from chasing dreams without waking. We sow seeds of hope for a better life, but we reap corn and we reap grains. So then we say we're going. Leave, travel, what difference? We do not know and so we don't look. We just want to go. Champuel, Bizangol, Chawapete, anywhere, uh, even if it's in hell since I'm not yet flat on the ground. And then we just have a four minute clip of James Desiris and Leonard Jean-Baptiste discussing um, some things that I didn't get around to discussing. So we'll just have the lights down once more and then we can go into conversation. Ah, bon. 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 Ah, bon
Même moi, je pense que spirale là, c'est carrément le mouvement de la vie. C'est le sens même de la créativité. C'est comme si c'est ces démarches qui ont une naissance à un bail nouveau. Oui. Et puis, pour qui ça ne va pas dire tout? Que c'est appel à cela même, comme si pour pour gain pour gain création qui fait, faut gain faut qu'on faut que ça partie de spirale quand même. Bon, fait, c'est ça me bosser. Ah, ok. Puis déjà nous gain nous bon paquet écrivain la caïno de qui connu à l'échelle mondiale. Ah oui, t'as connu les de... Franck Etienne. Oui, euh... nous avons René Philotet, nous avons oui. Jean-Claude Fignolet, oui. Dan Daniel Xaouina. Fignolet, c'est. Oui. Et eux même qui sont ici à faire. Franck Etienne, bon, justement, ouais. d'ailleurs, moi-même, j'ai une, une, une proximité ensemble avec elle. Déjà parce que c'est Franck Etienne qui est censé. Bon, bon, qui aime dire ça, saisir, et puis entraîner dans la poésie. Dans la poésie, ah ok. Et, et puis tout, M. Grandi Belair. Ah, M. ok. Même si avant ça, il dit, ok, je vais prendre proximité, un rapprochement, un rapport qui vient entre nous avec Franck Etienne. Ouais. Bon, pourquoi pas, ça peut aussi se faire descendre, tout, souvent, tout ça. Franck, ouais, non, je ou ou ouais. ah, ouais. Non, mais au fait, en quelque sorte, c'est mon grand frère. Ah, oui. C'est un grand frère. Parce que voilà, les. les, 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 les moi, je choc là. Et, et choc ça même son spirale. <rire> Parce que choc ça vient bouleverser en quelque sorte. Il avait dit le fait tourbillon, il fait ah, oui. mouvement, la crème, et puis il vient, il vient créer un autre, un autre monde. Il vient faire. Pour, non seulement pas son autre gens, et puis il vient prendre l'autre direction qui c'est suivre, suivre justement le mouvement spirale ça. Ah, oui. Et puis créer là. En quelque sorte, c'est, 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 c'est en spirale. C'est... Ah oui, parce, parce que, que c'est. Parce que c'est, 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 c'est un brassage, c'est un mélange qui ouais. fait et qui, qui, ouais. qui vient de boire créole. Et puis tout, créole n'a pas de sens comme si il n'a pas, pas de sens direct, il n'a pas de que premier degré. Le créole, là, souvent pour nous exprimer, il passe par un paquet de bâtiments, il compare ça à des objets ou bien à des faits. Comme oui. si il contournait et voilà. bah, là, avant le récit. Ah, comme si bon, oui. c'est, c'est ce même effet camouflage ouais. là, c'est effet marronnage ouais. là. Tout avec dit, qui... il y a tellement de bah, soucis bah, pour comme si, pour le pour, pour comprendre, il y a un avec un paquet d'images. Ah, un paquet d'images, oui. Mm. Okay. Justement, il y a un souci pour, pour, ma, pour oh. marronner, pour, 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 prendre, pour, pour prendre la fuite. Oh. Parce que c'était quand même un, un moyen pour te. Pour te Vous avez fui vigilance colon. Ah oui. Si vous prenez mot clé, mot clé, vous codez. Vous avez des bails comme ça. Et puis vous avez même yo codé, vous dit l'ongeant, vous utilisez des bails, des images, vous déformez, vous cherchez, vous créez un bail. Et puis vous avez. Aïe, t'en 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 t